All right, welcome to another deep dive. This time we're going on a little road trip, linguistically speaking, of course. Yeah, a road trip for your ears. Ha <laughs> ha, that's a good way to put it. And we're hitting three of the most iconic cities in the U.S. New York City, Los Angeles, and Chicago. These cities are like cultural powerhouses. Exactly, and yeah. they've each left their own uh, unique mark on American English. So it's not just about the history and the sites, but how people talk, the slang they use. It's all part of the experience. So first stop, the city that never sleeps, New York City. Oh, New York, there's no place like it. It's got this incredible energy where you can feel it in the streets, the pace of life. And that definitely comes through in the way New Yorkers talk. Absolutely. Ever heard the phrase, a New York minute? Oh yeah, it's like super fast, right? Like things happen in a flash. Exactly. It's not just about time, it's about that hustle, that get it done attitude. And you know, that energy comes from centuries of history, waves of immigrants, all contributing to this incredible mix. From the Dutch settlers who first called it New Amsterdam, to the millions who came through Ellis Island, each group added something to the mix. And all that history is woven into the city's language, its accent. Speaking of the accent, that New York accent is pretty iconic. Oh yeah, you can spot it a mile away, those dropped R's. Like coffee instead of coffee. Exactly, and that's just one little example. There are so many fascinating quirks. And it's not just pronunciation, but all the slang that's become part of everyday American English. So many words and phrases we use all the time have roots in New York's melting pot of cultures. Like schlep, meaning to carry something heavy. That comes from Yiddish, brought over by Jewish immigrants. And then there's schutzpa, which is like boldness, having the nerve. Yeah, it's that attitude, that confidence that New York is known for. To hear that classic New York accent in action, I always think of Frank Sinatra. Oh yeah, New York, New York. It yeah. doesn't get more New York than that. And speaking of things that are quintessentially New York, what about the nickname, the Big Apple? Oh yeah, most people think it's because New York is, well, big. Right, makes sense. But it actually comes from horse racing. Yeah. Back in the 1920s, a sports writer used Big Apple to refer to the big races around New York. Huh, I never knew that. It's funny how these nicknames stick, even if their origins are kind of random. Language is full of surprises. Isn't it? Okay, before we move on to LA, have you ever heard the word bodega? Bodega. It sounds familiar, but I can't quite place it. Okay. File it away, we'll come back to it later. Sounds good. A little mystery to keep us on our toes. All right, so let's trade those skyscrapers for palm trees and head west to Los Angeles the city of angels. LA, Hollywood, sunshine, the beach. It's got a whole different vibe. It does, and that vibe definitely influences the language too. And Hollywood, of course, has had a massive impact on how we speak English all over the world. Oh yeah, think about phrases like casting call or blockbuster. Those come straight from the movie industry. It's amazing how much of our everyday language comes from entertainment. And even if you've never been to LA, you probably recognize those iconic landmarks the Walk of Fame, the Hollywood sign, Griffith Observatory. They've become part of our collective imagination thanks to movies and TV shows. But LA isn't just Hollywood, right? There's so much more to the city. It's true, there are tons of different neighborhoods, each with its own unique flavor. Chinatown, Little Tokyo, Venice Beach, just to name a few. And speaking of unique LA flavor, have you ever heard the phrase, take a rain check? Sure, it means to postpone something, right? Like. Rain check on that coffee, gotta run. You got it. <laughs> but did you know it actually comes from baseball? If a game got rained out, they'd issue rain checks so fans could come back another time. Oh, interesting, I had no idea. And while we're on the subject of nicknames, what comes to mind when you hear La La Land? <laughs> it just sounds so dreamy, doesn't it? Like a little out of touch with reality. Yeah, it perfectly captures that Hollywood image, right? Definitely. Okay, before we head to Chicago, what about that New York mystery word? What was it again? Bodega. Bodega. Hmm. Okay, let me think. Is it some kind of food? Not quite, but it eyes a place you might find food. A restaurant. You're getting warmer. It's a small, often family-owned convenience store found all over New York City. Oh, I see. Like a little corner shop. Exactly. They're super important to the fabric of the city, especially late at night when you need a snack or a quick grocery run. I can imagine. So are you gonna hit me with another mystery word? I am. This time it's about LA. What do you think the 405 refers to? The 405. Knowing LA, I'm gonna guess it's a freeway. Maybe a famous one. You're on the right track. We'll reveal the answer when we get to Chicago. For now, buckle up, we're heading to the Windy City. Chicago deep dish pizza, here we come. Chicago, man, it's a city that's really been through it, you know? 
Oh yeah, talking about the Great Chicago Fire, right? 1871 wiped out so much of the city. It's incredible to think about rebuilding from something like that. And it really shaped the city, both physically and in its spirit, that resilience. You can see it in the architecture, like those skyscrapers, so iconic. Oh yeah, that skyline is world famous. The Willis Tower, formerly the Sears Tower, was the tallest building in the world for decades. And Navy Pier, right on the waterfront. Those views are amazing. It's a must-see for anyone visiting Chicago. Definitely. And Millennium Park, you can't forget that. The Bean, Cloud Gate, such cool sculptures. Chicago's art scene is incredible, and its musical heritage is just as rich. Oh yeah, Chicago is practically synonymous with jazz and blues. There's a melting pot for those genres. So many legendary musicians came out of Chicago. And the influence of that music on American culture is huge, even on the language itself. You're right. Think about the word jazzed meaning excited or enthusiastic. It comes straight from that Chicago jazz scene. It's fascinating how these cultural influences weave their way into everyday language. Absolutely. And just like New York and LA, Chicago has its own unique lingo. Oh yeah, Chicagoans definitely have their own way of talking. Have you ever heard the term the loop? Yeah, it's the downtown area, right? Named after the elevated train lines that loop around it. You got it. Speaking of transportation, what do you think the L refers to in Chicago? Mm. Well, we were just talking about those elevated train lines, so I'm guessing the L is short for the elevated train system. You nailed it. The L is a Chicago icon, a vital part of the city's transportation network. And then there's Chicago style, a phrase that can be applied to all sorts of things. Like those famous Chicago style hot dogs. Exactly. Loaded with hoppings, it's a culinary experience. And speaking of experiences, did you know that the iconic Route 66, also known as the Main Street of America, begins right here in Chicago? Really? I had no idea it started in Chicago. That's amazing. It is. It adds a whole other layer to the city's identity, that connection to the open road, that sense of adventure. Before we wrap up our Chicago exploration, let's circle back to that LA trivia. Any final guesses on what the 405 might be? I'm going to stick with my initial thought. I think it's a freeway, probably a pretty major one considering LA's car culture. You are absolutely right. The 405 is a major freeway that runs through Los Angeles, notorious for its traffic, but also a lifeline for the city. So we've explored the unique flavors of New York and Los Angeles, and now we've delved into the heart of Chicago. Each city has its own story to tell, reflected in its history, culture, and as we've seen, its language. It's really amazing how these three cities have all left their mark on American English. It's like each city has its own dialect, its own rhythm and slang. And it's so much fun to explore those nuances, to see how language reflects the character of a place. Exactly. So for our listeners out there, we hope this deep dive has inspired you to keep exploring these incredible cities and the ways they've shaped how we speak. Now, before we say goodbye, remember that last trivia question, but what about Chicago? Oh yeah, what does the L stand for? I bet a lot of our listeners figured that one out. You're probably right. But just in case, the L, short for elevated, refers to Chicago's iconic elevated train system. You know, it's not just about getting around. Riding the L is like a Chicago experience in itself. Oh, absolutely. Those tracks weaving through the city, you get some amazing views from up there. And the sounds, the rhythm of the train, it's all part of the city's soundtrack. It really connects you to the pulse of Chicago, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And you know, thinking about all three cities we've explored, New York, LA, Chicago. They're all so different, yet they've all played such a huge role in shaping American English. That's what's so cool about language, right? It's always evolving, always reflecting the places and the people who speak it. It's like a living, breathing thing, picking up bits and pieces from all these different cultures and influences. And it's up to us to keep exploring those influences to appreciate the richness and diversity of it all. You know, maybe even try incorporating some of those unique expressions into our own speech. A little Chicago-style flair never hurt anyone. Haha, uh -huh, exactly. Embrace the slang, the accents, the quirks. It's all part of the fun of language. So tell us, what were some of your favorite discoveries from this deep dive? Did any of the trivia questions stump you? Yeah, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to The Deep Dive for more adventures in language and culture. We're diving deep into all sorts of fascinating topics, so hit that subscribe button and join us on the journey. Until next time, keep those ears open, those minds curious, and keep those conversations flowing.